Hi, my name's Alistair Chapman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at S and Q motion, or slow and quick motion, and picture cache recording in this camera, the Sony PXW FS7. S and Q motion, also known as slow and quick motion, allows you to shoot at a frame rate that is different to the playback frame rate. So by shooting at a high speed, I will slow down the action that I'm filming, or by shooting at a frame rate of say five frames per second, I will speed up the action that I'm filming. So slow and quick motion allows you to either slow down or speed up the action that you're shooting. S and Q motion is divided into two modes. There is the normal mode and the HFR mode. You can switch the camera into S and Q motion by simply pressing the S and Q motion assignable button here on the camera. If the camera is recording 4K when you do this, your S and Q motion will be limited to 1 to 60 frames per second. To be able to use the HFR mode that allows you to shoot faster than 60 frames per second, the camera must first be set to HD. In the HFR mode, the camera can shoot at up to 240 frames per second, depending on its exact configuration. If the camera is set to NTSC area and you're shooting XAVC, the maximum frame rate is 180 frames per second. If you're shooting RAW, then you can go up to 240 frames per second by recording onto an external RAW recorder. If the camera is set to PAL area, then the HFR high frame rate recording limit is 150 frames per second. Do consider that if you're predominantly shooting with a PAL area setting, that if you do want to get that 180 frames per second performance, you can switch the camera to NTSC area, shoot using HFR at 180 frames per second, and then adjust the speed of your clip in post-production to match your project settings. If you're shooting in the normal S and Q motion mode, then the camera's sensor is read out in its entirety. As a result, you can go from one frame per second for shooting time-lapse perhaps, all the way up to 60 frames per second with no loss of image quality and no change in the way the picture looks. But when you switch to the HFR mode, the sensor is read differently to enable a high speed readout. In some situations, this can lead to a little bit of aliasing and perhaps a little bit more noise in your pictures. But this mode does then allow you to shoot at much higher frame rates than you would with a normal camera. The image quality is still very good. In future versions of the FS7 firmware, as well as the normal scan mode for HFR shooting, there will also be a center scan mode. The center scan mode uses just the center of the sensor to read out a full HD image. The benefit of this is that every single pixel can be read at high speed. So the center scan mode will not suffer from aliasing and moiré in the same way as the full frame HFR mode. The downside is that it does expand your image by two times. It effectively doubles the focal length of your lenses. So you will need some very wide angle lenses for wide angle shots. When shooting in HFR, it's really important to have your scene adequately illuminated and to expose nice and bright to get the very best results. A common issue when you're shooting in HFR is that the shutter speed of the camera will often be faster than the flicker rate of the lights that may be illuminating the scene that you're shooting. This can result in flickering or dark bands that roll up and down the picture. This isn't a fault, this is simply a side effect of having that faster shutter speed. There's very little you can actually do about it other than changing the lights that you're using. One of the problems with this mismatch between the camera's shutter speed and the lighting frequency is that very often you won't see the flicker or rolling dark bands while you're shooting. And that's because when you're filming, you don't see every single frame that's being shot while you're recording. So I highly recommend that when you are shooting HFR, 
that you always play back a few clips before proceeding to check for this flicker problem with your lighting. For high speed video work, you really want either a continuous light source, such as tungsten lights, or lights specifically designed for video applications that have a very high refresh rate or flicker rate. Typical office type fluorescent lighting is normally very bad for flicker, but LED lighting designed for video applications, as well as HMI lights with a high frequency ballast, in most cases will be flicker free. There are some limitations when you're using the S&Q mode. If you're using Cine EI, you can no longer have independent lookup tables for the internal recording as well as your outputs. They must all be set exactly the same. And autofocus and auto iris no longer operate. And it's highly recommended that you only use the fastest G series XQD cards. The picture cache function allows you to record up to 15 seconds of action that takes place prior to pressing the record button. So the camera has a memory that is constantly storing the signal off the sensor. When you press record, the contents of that memory are recorded onto the XQD card ahead of your recording to make a seamless file that contains up to 15 seconds of video from before you hit record. This is particularly useful for capturing unexpected things, such as lightning in a thunderstorm, because you can wait for the lightning to flash and then press record. Now the amount of time before hitting record that you are able to record depends on the format that you are using. If you're using the MPEG-2 format, you get the most time because these are very small files. If you're using XAVC HD, that record time is a little bit more limited. If you're using XAVC in 4K, then that time becomes very limited because the 4K XAVC files require a lot more storage space. So to get the maximum picture cache time, you might want to consider using MPEG-2. It's very simple to use. Just enable the picture cache function in the menu Make sure the camera is pointed in the direction of the action that you want to shoot. And as soon as you see the action take place, press record. The cache memory is automatically added to the beginning of your recording and you don't need to do anything else.